All right, so I woke up this morning to a reverb order of all of these bow tie lugs, at least the big ones. I bought these on eBay like a year ago because I bought this club date which has a mismatched floor tom. So the plan was to convert this snare into the floor tom because it kind of resembles the club date floor tom. The only difference is this has nickel hardware, also it's a snare, but also it has the smaller bow tie lugs while the club dates have the bigger bow tie lugs on the floor tom. But it turns out that finding a matching wrap is basically impossible, so I kind of gave up on that project and that's why I'm selling these. They are packaged up and conveniently fit perfect inside of a small flat rate box, so that's very nice. But I just checked and I made $7 off of these. Kind of sad, but then again, I bought these to use them and not to sell them, so keep that in mind. All right, it's tomorrow, and that Red Grand Star just sold. So I've been poking away at packing this thing up. I'm still not done, but probably my least favorite thing to do is pack a drum set. And just last night, I packed up that Superstar to go back to Zounds, so I've been having a lot of fun over here. So after everything is said and done, I made $200 off of this kit. So that's not bad for like a couple hours worth of work. Um, also, it came with a, a newer tom mount, like a modern tom mount, which uh, I didn't include in the listing because I need this actually. So it's a nice little bonus. All right, so this next one is a trade and he threw in this uh, China. So might do something interesting with that. But what I'm actually after is in here. So this old thing is a five snare drum, which is made out of fiberglass. Ooh, fancy. But not long ago, I got a fives uh, drum set with the same chrome wrap on it. And uh, someone offered me the snare. And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll take it. So we worked out a trade, and uh, this is one of the pieces. And it has the rims over here that's wrapped up. But five snares have these weird uh, throw-off or butt plate things, which apparently always go bad and go missing. So the cool thing is that there are no holes drilled in this shell, so uh, I can just take this thing off and put uh, a regular butt plate on it. And same thing with this throw-off, I can take it off and replace it with something else. So uh, yeah, definitely a little grimy and needs some, some TLC. But it's definitely a cool snare and should go good with that drum set. And then the second drum is this Rogers Tom. This is a 12 inch Tom, 12 by 8, that's been restained and honestly it looks pretty good. But I have this old crusty floor Tom, which I got for like nothing. And then right after I got this one, I got this drum, which is a Gretsch Blackhawk, which I assume is some sort of import drum made by the same people that made the import Rogers, I'm guessing, because it has the same lugs on it, as well as Roger Styles claws and tension rods. Basically, I have the floor tom, this bass drum, and then, what do you know, I got this drum from the same guy that had the floor tom. It turns out he found this drum, but this is a 13 by 13 rack tom, which is kind of crazy. So my plan was to cut this down, but instead I'm just gonna take the lugs off of here and put it on the 12 inch. This is a snare from Guitar Center. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, this thing is way heavier than I was thinking. Fost Music Milwaukee Drum Center. Never heard of them before. Alright, so this is me from the future. I said some things that I changed my mind about, so let me explain. So first of all, this is a Tama Imperial Star. This is a King Beat because it has diecast hoops and a parallel strainer. This is a first generation drum because the strainer is a bit different than the second gen. And same thing with the muffler. This is just a generic made in Japan muffler that you find on a lot of other drums. And again, is different than the second gen. So after looking over this drum, I realized that this thing is in mint condition because first of all, it has the stock heads which have like zero stick marks on them. And also the snare wires seem to be in immaculate shape and appear to be original. You can see the made in Japan stamp, which the new wires, replacement wires don't have that. But the biggest thing is I looked up this store, Faust Music Milwaukee Drum Center, and the guy that owned it, Bill Faust, who has unfortunately passed away, apparently he had like just a massive collection of new old stock snares. So if I had to guess, this is one of them. 
So after some thinking, I decided I'm gonna put this drum on a reverb for just a crazy collector's price and see if it sells because, you know, part of me is like, oh, it's a drum, play it. But at the same time, it's like, when do you come across a drum like this? So I don't know. And at the same time, I hate to like see a drum just go to like a collector and not be played. So I don't know. I'm like torn between what to do. But again, if I can get a crazy amount of money for it, then I'll be happy. If not, then maybe I'll play it. I sold this snare, which is the Pearl Soprano. I really thought about keeping it, but it's, it's just not for me. So grand total, I paid $50 for it and I sold it for $165. And I also just packaged up this thing, which is the 20 inch Ludwig Duo, the giant concert tom things from a couple months ago. And if I was to keep one of these, it probably would have been the 20, but when the opportunity came to sell it, I figured, screw it, just get rid of it, and I'll do something with these. So I sold this one for 150, and once I get rid of these other three, I'll tell you what I paid for them. And this just showed up, so let's slice it open. So here we have eight Ludwig bow tie lugs off of an Acrolyte, along with all of the guts. I'm hoping this is all the guts, so I'll count that in a second. But let me tell you the plan for these. So I won't say too much as to why I bought these, but it involves this shell and four more lugs. All right, so the month is coming to an end, but that interface that I sold that got returned back to me, I just sold it again for $30 less, but I don't care. It's gone forever. See ya. Bye. But I need to package all of this stuff up. If you follow E-Man on Instagram, you saw he bought a Rogers kit, but he needs a hoop for it. So conveniently, I have a 20 inch Rogers hoop. This is my most recent purchase. It's a Rogers holiday kit. 20 by 14, I've been looking for that. Kick drum size forever or 14 by 20, come at me. Shout out to R David R. He hooked me up with this hoop and these tension rods and claws. And I actually bought that hoop to put on the club date because I thought painting this one would be too hard, but it turns out the Ludwig claws don't fit on it, so now it's going to a good home. He also needed some claws and tension rods. These, of course, aren't uh, Roger's claws or tension rods, but he doesn't care, so I gotta package this stuff up and ship it out. All right, me from the future again, because I didn't really wrap up this video. But uh, I'm kind of glad I didn't because I have some things to show you. So if we think back to the beginning of this video, I sold those bow tie lugs and this is what he did with them. So he found this old Slingerland parade snare. This is a single tension drum. You can see uh, the tension rod screws into the claw here, but he cut this sucker down, slapped those lugs on it. And I must say it looks pretty badass. So he made it 14 by eight and those lugs like fit perfectly on that drum and again it looks pretty badass and then second the guy that bought the giant concert tom converted that into a bass drum and you'll see he left it as a single headed drum i would have done things a little bit differently but you know it's his drum so he can do it how he wants but now he has a giant concert tom bass drum thing all right so me from the future yet again to actually wrap up this video a few things Obviously, these are filmed in advance, so when I say, like, oh, it's April, but really, this video is out in June, of course, these are filmed in advance, and I need that month to film the month of content. And then second, I still get messages and comments and questions about what's your reverb page, but of course, you can find that in the description of almost every video. And then last, just because of the nature of these videos, people will see a snare or a symbol or something that I buy and message me or comment or email me saying, hey, do you still have this drum or symbol or whatever? So if there is something that you're interested in, your best bet is to check my reverb page. But again, because of the scheduling, I'll list stuff before the video is even published and that stuff will sell sometimes. So your best bet is just to follow my reverb page so you get a notification every time I list something. So yeah, that's all I wanted to say, but considering I'm from the future, next month's video is pretty crazy, so stay tuned for that. So yeah, thanks for watching.